Good morning, good morning, good morning. I see you chiming in from quite literally all over the world. My name is Pastor Kirk, and I am so excited that you're with us today. This is day what? Does anybody know? Does anybody have it? Uh, this, this is day number six. Day number six. How many of you are 646? Six six? Let me see those hashtags in the chat. Uh, our moderators are doing great work out there. Uh, Sister Ingrid, uh, Sister Roycelyn, uh, Sister Kimberly, thank you so much for doing what you do and welcoming everyone to such an inviting spirit, even early in the morning here online. We're excited to see all of it. Uh, man, let me see. Let me see. Let me see what we got. What we what do we have? Who do we have? There's so many. Uh, New York is in the house. Barbados, Montego Bay is in the house. I see it. I see it. Canada is well represented. Wisconsin is here. Ohio is represented as well. I like to see that. Uh, let me see. I've, I'm seeing some. Huntsville is in the house. Huntsville, Alabama is well represented in the chat today. I see uh, good morning from Richmond Heights, Ohio. Somebody says, okay, good, 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 good. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. This is good. Englewood, New Jersey is in the house. That's good. And Buffalo, New York is in the house. We've got we've got a lot of folks representing. And I see your six for six, uh, six for six, six for six, six for six, New Jersey, San Antonio, Texas, six for six. Uh, so many of you are here with us today. Massachusetts, Oklahoma, sunny Florida, Toronto. Come on. Virgin Islands, Harvest, Alabama, <laughs> Trinidad. Connecticut, Curacao. All right. All right. All right. Somebody said four for six. All right. Here, here's what I want to ask you as we dive in today. Did you invite anybody? Did you invite, <clears throat> did you invite anybody? Nassau Bahamas. Wow. Well. Savannah, Georgia, man. St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, okay. Somebody said no audio. I hope that it's, you, you can, you can, you can rectify that because I believe that they are hearing me uh, because they're responding to what I'm saying. <laughs> did you invite anyone? Did you invite anyone? And if you did, let us know how many people you invited. Today is, as, as you have put in the chat already, preparation day. And we're excited for this, our 21 days of prayer, 21 days of prayer. Here's what I, I want to put on our, on our screen real quick is our covenant. Our excuseless covenant. This is how we begin every morning. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we put this out there. Uh, by the end of the 21 days, we should actually have this committed to memory. So let's pause in our posting just so we can recite this together. Let's start. All right. Today, I continue the journey toward excuseless living. I recognize that excuses are kryptonite to my soul and cancer to my calling. I make a covenant to stop lying to myself about why I pray so little, fall so often, procrastinate so frequently, neglect my health, live without structure, and leave family outcomes up to chance. I will add focus to essential things and withdraw focus from optional things. I will focus less on what I'm lacking and stand in the promise of God's supply. I will reclaim my time, budget my energy, and withhold oxygen from all excuses. This is the season. This is the time. I guess I said that wrong. The time is now. I feel my help. Let the revolution begin. I claim God's power to become excuseless, excuseless. Come on, come on. Does anybody else get amped up? It's like a rally cry. It's like a, a pep rally, you know, at a high school when the, the band is there, the cheerleaders are there. Like, Let's go. We want to be excuseless. I hope that you guys are, are excited with me. I hope that you are reciting it with me. I hope that you allow that covenant to Get down deep in the inside and you begin to make some of those tenets part of your daily life, part of the fabric of who you are. Ah, uh, 63 invited, somebody says. That's absolutely amazing. Six for six plus one, Pamela says. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perla says that the declaration is fire. I, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, no. So, so I, I want to make sure that you guys are, are hearing me well. Somebody says that the audio is going in and out, but I, I don't, I don't see any indication of that in, in my, in my audio here. So I, I'm hoping that it's okay. Uh, 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 Dr. Pollard said he could hear me pretty good earlier. So we'll, we'll bring him on screen in just a second as after we have our opening prayer. But I wanted to say this, I wanted to say this, 
There were so many nuggets of wisdom shared yesterday by, by Pastor Paul and Pastor Mark. Oh, my word. It was absolutely phenomenal. I saw some of you putting some of your takeaways in the chat already with go be like the go be. I see it. Somebody says, I'm ready for the climb. I'm ready for the climb. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go up the mountain. I, I think that this this, this thing it was such a uh, whenever Pastor Mark comes through we get that that nature that reference from nature and and that reference from nature sometimes is it just it's got God's fingerprint on it right I mean there's just no other way to really to really talk about that thing without God saying man this is what I've done for what I've created in nature how much more am I willing to do for you. There was so many things that we that have reinforced the chapters that we are reading in this book. Uh, I, and I hope that you are tracking with them. I hope that you are making your notes as well. I, I I'm, I've marked up this book. This book is <laughs> this book is is, is going to I'm going to have to buy another copy uh, so I can have one that's off to the side. And I have one that I can repeatedly go through and go through and go through. I see some of your comments coming in. I want to see what your takeaways are. Let me just get a one or two takeaways before, uh, before, yeah, yeah. Several of you are saying, we, we can hear you. Audio is great. Audio is great. All right. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to see some of your takeaways before we get in there. Fire for nature. Pastor Rafael brought it again. I love it. I love it. I love it. And some of our moderators are trying to help those with audio issues. Try refreshing your browser. Sometimes that might help. Try closing the YouTube app or wherever you're watching from. And sometimes that might help as well. Uh, Pastor Kirk, looking forward for my song tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, th th that's only for those that know. You got to keep that between us. You know, that's just that's just something for, for those that know. But I see your takeaways. It's the climb. Thank you, God. I see some of your takeaways. This book is my burning book. Yolanda Williams says, uh, 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 good morning from, from Nearville, Manitoba, Canada, six for six. I love it. Uh, somebody's asking David Wright says, how can I order a, a copy of that book? It's in the description. Plus our moderators will put a link in the chat. So if you want, you can look for that, that link from our moderators, or if you just expand the description right underneath the video, wherever you're watching, you can get the link to the book, whether you want to buy it on Amazon or you want to order it directly from Breath of Life, you can go online and order that book. If you're local to Huntsville, you can actually come into the office and pick up a copy today, both the office at Breath of Life and the office uh, uh, the church uh, store here at the church at, at Oakland University Church. So uh, those are some of the things. All right, let me get this one last one and then we're going to pray. Monica Pope says, I was so engaged. I was so engaged with the nature story. I wanted more. Then I saw him yesterday and I told him, go be a uh, go be. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. I got to tell you, it is so cool to be able to see people uh, during the week uh, as we as we are continuing through these these 21 days, this is absolutely amazing. God pack, packaged me. Here we go. Uh, God packaged me with all that I need to fulfill my calling. Oh, that's that is a realization. That is a moment that you want to diarize. You want to put the date down. Uh, in your diary, where you came to this realization so that you can see what God will do after you came to that realization. That is absolutely amazing. Let's let's bow our heads for prayer, and then we're going to welcome our speaker for today. Father, thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for blessing us in, 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 in the climb, for the climb, preparing us for the climb. Thank you for the realizations that we've been able to have, that you have equipped us for everything you are calling us to do. Father, we thank you for these, these morning refreshing moments that we've been able to have over the past five days today, making number six. And today, God, we ask for yet again that you would show up, that you would use your manservant, that you would bless us in a special way. God, we thank you for your presence and your spirit in this place. We thank you for the people who will be touched, those who are watching live with us and those who will catch this on replay. These things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, we want to say a word of welcome to Dr. Pollard. How are you today? 
Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Nugent. I am delighted to be here this morning. I'm feeling great. Feeling great. Good. Good, 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 man. I tell you, we we are we are overjoyed uh, with the, the 797 devices that are connected. Uh, we say devices because you know two or three, maybe even a family could be watching on one device. And so we don't know how many people are watching. That number could be exponential. And then when we think about what God will do and he will breathe on this thing and these numbers will increase and it will go out to the four corners of the earth, we are excited for what we are able to do with media and technology this morning. Doc, we, uh, (laughs) several people in the chat are saying, good morning, Dr. Pollard. I I just want to make sure that we all get a chance to greet you. And uh, and uh, thank you for for being with us early this morning. I know this these are your hours. I used to get text messages from you uh, around these times. <laughs> so these, the best, this, this, this is your time. My best work gets, my best work gets done early, 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 early in the morning. And uh, listen, so, yeah. I, I, I if you study if you study the habits of successful people, you you will find that they are up right around four or three even sometimes. They it's are. crazy. But well, we, we're excited to have you here. I have a quick question for you, and then we're going to let you loose. One of the, okay. the the questions we've been asking all of our speakers day to day is what is what is the air? What are some of the areas, or maybe just one area that you want to hone in on that you hear God saying in this particular area? No more excuses. You know, we we got a chance oh. to ask this question of several of our our, our, right. our leaders and speakers and 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 teachers from from morning to morning, uh, but I just feel it makes it so practical when we're able to share with others. Like this is where I hear God saying, "No more excuses." Doc, share with us. Okay, okay. So thank you very much. So I've heard that through the years on one point, and and God has helped me because I'm able to help other people with it. Mm. Uh, when I was when I was six years, my mother and father were never married. And uh, when I, you know, Kirk, when people see certain things, especially if they see certain letters behind your name, they project a certain kind of childhood and family that must have produced that. Mm. But but in my case, it's just the opposite. My mother and father were never married. And um, my father had two different lives. And I, I know I'm the only person who's ever been born into this situation. So I have to explain it for people. I say that tongue in cheek. Um, (laughs) But I remember one, I I remember one day, I remember one day that he, uh, he said to me, he said to me, uh, I, I, my bicycle, I just got a brand new bicycle, picked up a flat. I was trying to fix it at six years old. And he said to me, I said, daddy, can you, and he said, don't ever call me daddy again. Oh man. And I remember there were, there were times when I when I when that thing ached even into my teen years and that kind of yeah. thing. So I, I get to Oakwood, and I'm in a week of prayer, and uh, and and just like these these moments we're having here, Kirk, I'm in a week of prayer. I'm at Oakwood as a freshman student, and one of the speakers starts talking about how God can heal the hurts of the past. And I said, God, you're going to have to heal me so I can rise above this. I can't drag this around like a ball and chain. Wow. And everyone, everyone that we meet, uh, Kirk, is, is dragging around something like a ball yeah. and chain. Yeah. And you've yeah. got to decide that God is going to free you from it. And once God freed my spirit from that, I was able to soar. But more than that, I was able to use that experience to connect to other young men, especially African-American young men mm. who, who, who had experienced the father wound. Yeah. Um, and it was a, it was an amazing moment. And God gave me freedom from that. So that was an area where I couldn't make excuses. I couldn't blame. I, you know, I understand now I'm a man. I understand he couldn't afford for me to call him daddy when he's got two lives. Mm. And I may see him in public in a small town. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adult now. I, I understand better. I forgave him before he passed it, you know, because I needed to get it out of my spirit. You know what they say, forgiveness um, to not forgive is like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. Mercy. Um, Yeah. It's like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. So, so once you get that out of your spirit, you're free to soar and God continued to take me to places that I never, ever a little simple boy, more than 60 different countries around the world. I, I can't I can't ask for anything else. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. You know, you, you know, you you raise a a major issue, uh, especially within the black community and and particularly among among men. Uh, uh, but, yes. you, you yes. know, you, you perfectly couch it in the phrase the father wound. 
And mm -hmm. there are those who may not even understand what that means because they've not mm -hmm. done some of the work or maybe they don't suffer from that particular mm -hmm. uh, issue. But I, mm -hmm. I want to just say to, to someone out there who your excuses have been around the area of going to get some therapy. Your excuses mm -hmm. have been around in the area mm -hmm. of going and kind of dealing with some of those wounds and those deep seated hurts in the past mm -hmm. so that you can be free to move toward your future. And one of the things mm -hmm. I absolutely love that you shared there, Doc, is that you now use that experience to resonate and connect with those who have been hurt in the same way. And I just Amen. believe that this is what God does. This is what God does. When you stop making excuses and you can now go and assist others who face the similar thing that you faced, uh, it becomes a beautiful thing. It becomes a beautiful thing. As a Amen. content coach, Amen. I share with people all the time, you know, you know, you're, if you're looking for your audience, if you're looking for the people who you can speak to with credibility, uh, with, with people who will yes. resonate with you, you just need to look in the mirror. You need to just kind of create your own profile Think about yeah. who you are and where you've come from and your experiences. Like for me, third culture kid, uh, child of immigrants, uh, former missionary. Mm -hmm. There's so many mm -hmm. little things. As yeah. you start to stack them, you start to see a profile emerge. And there are people you mm -hmm. can speak to because of your experience that no one else can speak to. And I love Amen. what you just shared there. Man, it's such a <laughs> such a, a powerful Amen. share right here at the beginning. And this is why we do it. And I see several of you in the comments section just, just kind of going for it. So, 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 Doc, thank you so much for sharing there. We're going to turn the time over to you. I know you have some some things you want to share with the folks. So I'm we sure, want to turn sure. the time over to you. Well, let me, thank you, Kirk. And I, I, I'll jump right into it. Let me thank, of course, uh, Pastor Snell and the team for the invitation. It's a it's a privilege and a pleasure to work cooperatively for the the good of the campus and the well-being of all of our constituents. So thank you. Let's make, let me just go to my slides here, uh, Kirk, if I may. Uh, I had chapter six here, the difference between a reason and an excuse. And man, that thing caught my spirit. I said, ooh, yeah, I love this. I love this. They are reasons and they are excuses. Uh, and then I went to this, uh, this consultant, Gary Blair, who has this amazing statement uh, around this. And I, <laughs> it's kind of blunt, but when I, when I look at the statement, it's kind of blunt. He says, I have a confession to make. He says, I'm pretty fed up with all the thumb suckers. <laughs> I told you it was blunt now, you know, so, so put on your seatbelt. It's kind of blunt. I'm pretty fed up with all the thumb suckers in this world. I'm talking about the people who are constantly whining, complaining, rationalizing, and justifying why their life is a succession of bad luck and unfinished endeavors. I'm talking about the people who start projects, but somehow never find a way to finish them. I'm talking about the people with the highest intentions, but who deliver the lowest results. Now watch this. This is the part that caught my attention. These people are more interested in arriving at success without having to do the heavy lifting themselves. They refuse to accept the reality that they must do their own push-ups. <laughs> Kirk, I like that one. I like that one. They must do their own push-ups. Nobody can do your push-ups or my push-ups for me. We have to do them. And so that's what I like about that quote. It's kind of blunt, but it, it wakes you up in the morning. And you say, yeah, am I doing my own work? Am I putting in the time? Am I giving myself the opportunities? Am I striving for success or significance? And we can talk a little bit about that. That's Oprah Winf Winfrey's distinction. She said, if you go for success, you will be burdened by that. But if you strive for significance, making life better, making the world a better place, then you will be happy along the way. So in chapter six of the book, Pastor Snell has a wonderful chapter on the difference between a reason and an excuse. And I went out and I started kind of looking around and saying, okay, let me see what the difference is. So excuses are not reasons and reasons are not excuses. So let's compare the two. A reason, and we'll go down them in the column. A reason. A reason is a fairly, is a logical, fair, reasonable, and defensible explanation for an existing set of circumstances. A reason. Um, Stevie Wonder was born, well, he wasn't born blind. He was given too much oxygen, we are told, at a time when that was one of the therapies used on children that may have been preemies or, or infants who were struggling. And there's a reason he's blind. It destroyed his retina, et cetera, et cetera. There's a reason he's blind. 
But he never used blindness as an excuse for not doing music. But there is a reason, a reason. And I can give example after example like that. A reason for being late to a meeting. There's a reason. My car wouldn't start. That's a reason. My car didn't, I, get in, I give myself enough time. I get in, the car doesn't start. There's a reason. Um, reasons give us information and context that are necessary to understand the needed action steps to remedy the situation. And I think that's what's important here. As I read the chapter before we get to the biblical text, um, reasons always imply what the next steps will be. Okay, so if my car didn't start, if I was late because my car didn't start, the next step was either to get a new car, or get a different car, get somebody to give me a ride, get the car fixed. It implies next steps. Now, what are excuses? Excuses, wow. An excuse is something that we use, as one writer said, to deflect blame. Excuse is a way of not taking responsibility. And we'll look at some of those excuses in the life of Moses. Excuses are given out of a desire to avoid consequences. Excuses, and this is, these are the three, excuses produce inaction. Oh, well, nothing I can do about it. Oh, well, excuses avoid responsibility and they justify failure. They're not reasons, and reasons are not excuses. So as we look at the biblical text, um, Moses had excuses why he couldn't go. God had reasons why he should go, and that's the heart of that chapter. So let's look at a few of Moses' excuses. Now we're going to look at the biblical text. So given that backdrop, let's look at the biblical text. So Moses had many excuses. So if you were following in your Bibles, Exodus 3.11, Moses had the I'm not good enough excuse, all right? Um, the self-esteem excuse. Um, God, you know the story. God used an ordinary burning bush to show Moses his message. The bush wasn't special on its own, but it became an instrument in God's glory. The bush was burning, but it was not consumed, which was an odd thing. Now, Moses in the wilderness had seen many bushes that were burning and had consumed and finally gone out. But as Moses observed this bush, this bush never, ever, ever went out and he knew that that was odd. And so you know the story how he stops at the burning bush in Exodus 3. God speaks to him out of the bush and Moses begins to give his excuses, the self-esteem excuse. I'm not good enough. Um, it reminded me of the story of Gideon, Kirk, uh, the story of Gideon when, when, when the angel showed up and said to Gideon, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. And, 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 and Gideon said, uh, who, me? <laughs> you, you must have the wrong, me? <laughs> You must have the wrong person, but God never has the wrong person. When God picks you, you are the right person. When God anoints you, you are the right person. Some may be appointed, but when God anoints you, you are the right person. And so God said, hey, wait, 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 wait. I will take care of you. I will be with you and you will do the work. So here's another excuse in 313. So after God responds to him, he, Moses, uh, Moses says to God, he says, okay. He says, look, look, he says, um, they won't listen to me. Um, um, my answers won't be good enough. Um, I don't know enough. Um, uh, I'm not persuasive. Uh, all of these different reasons. In 313, M Moses said to God, my answers aren't what they're looking for. He says, now, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? Now, listeners, we often forget the significance of this. Why would they, why would, why would that even come into the mind of Moses? Why would that even come into his mind? Okay, so, and I'll do the last one and then we wrap up. Why would that even come into his mind? Because Moses grew up in Egypt and in the Egyptian pantheon, the Egyptian hall of gods, every god has a name, Osiris, Ra, um, 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 I, I, I jotted down a few of them, Horus, the falcon-headed god, uh, Hathor, the, the cow head, every god, what's the name? And God says, I'm going to give you, here's what you tell them. You tell them that I am, that I am has sent you. Meaning that I am, I am all sufficient. This is the present tense. I am all sufficient. Now, Jesus picks this up in the gospels, in the book of John, and the I am sayings of Jesus are the fulfillment of what God said at the burning bush, telling us that Jesus was not just a great teacher, but he was divine. I am the light. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread. I am the water of life. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. Moses had a speech impediment. He said, I don't speak well, but God gave him persuasion. So 
What do we do now? So those were Moses. Here's the, here's the takeaway. When you and I have excuses, God's response are always the reasons that we should do exactly what he said we should do. Who made man's mouth? I will be with you. And when I am is with you, that's all you need to overcome. So let me leave you with this quote. Let me leave you with this quote because I know these are short. Here we go. Mrs. Ellen G. White. She said, take the word of Christ as your assurance. Has he not invited you to come unto him? Listen now. Listen, listen, audience. You should jot this down. Never, I, I like what Kirk said, diarize this. You should diarize this. Never allow yourself to talk in a hopeless, discouraged way. If you do, you will lose much. Ellen White here is working on a principle, the principle of altitude. We rise or fall to the level of our confession. She says, never. If I were in the audience, I'd say, what did she say? Never. And you would shout back, never, never allow yourself to talk in a hopeless, discouraged way. If you do, you will lose much. By looking at appearances and complaining when difficulties come, you give evidence of a sickly, enfeebled faith. And then this is what she says, talk and act as if your faith was invincible. Invincible faith. You see, ladies and gentlemen, excellence is a choice. In my next slide, I've got some young people featured. They're in our honors program here at Oakwood University. Every one of these young people is an excellent student. Excellence is a choice. They're in our honors program. They work hard every single day. We expect them to do great things in life and God will bless them. So thank you very much. Talk and act as if your faith is invincible invincible faith. Never allow yourself, never, she says, to talk in a hopeless, discouraged way. And Kirk, that's our thought for this morning. We like to say it when we're working with students. Success has an address. It's Oakwood University. So that's it, Kirk. Man, 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 man. There's there's a lot there, a lot there that you already shared. And and we want to unpack just a little bit, just a little bit, because I, I, I love what was shared there. And I, I'm trying to see if I, there's a way I can bring this slide up uh, without messing up too much here. Let me let me see if I can do that. <clears throat> but there's you, you talked about never, never accept. Uh, I want to bring I want to say that properly. Let me let me get that slide right, right out here. Never allow yourself to talk in a hopeless, discouraged a hopeless, way. Hopeless. That's it. In a hopeless, no, discouraged never, way. Never. Never. Yeah. 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 Never. I, and I also I also love the so that means a lot because how we speak out of the mouth. Uh, flows, That's you know, he's an indicator of where your heart is, is an indicator of where your belief right. system is, is an indicator of the power, all that the you, power of life and death, the power of in life the and tongue, death. In, in the, the tongue. In the tongue. Absolutely. In what you say. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then there is, there is also power in recognizing who God is. And, yeah. I, and I believe that in life, we all have those moments where we say to God, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I love, I love, you know, so Moses says it. And of course, he gave, you gave some beautiful history and background in terms of Moses' upbringing and how he arrives at that moment. But some of us will arrive at that moment in different ways. And, 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 and you know, uh, Hagar, Hagar in the desert gave God yeah. a new name after he said, I will never forsake you. You know, and, and I just wonder for those that are out there, what, what name have you given God? Or what name has God revealed to you that he is in your situation? It's one of the things I always love to hear, especially from uh, people like Dr. Pollard and other and some of our other speakers, is, is how they have been able to hear God speaking to them. It is an indicator, it is an example that we are not devoid of this, right? For the person who's watching online somewhere, that you, just because... Dr. Pollard is who he is does not mean he has more access to God than you do. Doesn't mean that God will not reveal himself to you in ways that he has not revealed himself to others because you may not need the God that he needed. You might may not need God to show mm -hmm. up as the father to heal the father wound. You may need God to mm -hmm. show up in a different way. And so mm -hmm. my question then becomes, even as we look at the chapter, <laughs> as we look at the chapter, the difference between a reason and excuse. Who is God to you mm -hmm. in your situation, mm -hmm. in your life? How, how does he, 
how has he made himself known in your experiences? Are you sensitive to them? Have you have you leaned into to all that he's doing? And, and I love the I love that you 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 the phrase excellence is a choice. I I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. And especially as we talk about excuses and reasons, there there's so many examples that, that that Pastor Snell put in the in the chapter of those mm-hmm. who should not have been as, mm-hmm. as, in, in excellence. They they chose it despite all that they had to deal with, all that they had to overcome. And, and I hope that we all fully grapple with that thing and and come out on the other side, understanding where you need to put your focus, your energy and your 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 your, your efforts. Uh, Doc, I want to say a word of thanks, man, for for, oh, for sharing with us. It, it, you know, as, as they say, it doesn't have to be eternal for it to be effective. And I love <laughs> it, man. You, you gave it you gave us a, a, a powerful message. And I can see that resonated by those who are in the chat. Uh, we want to go into a time of prayer. Uh, we want to go into a time of prayer. I'm going to ask Pastor Dr. Pollard to, 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 to share with us uh, in just a moment as we get ready for prayer. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. All right. So, so this is our time. This is our time for prayer, everybody. And, uh, I'm going to bring that music down just a little bit. Yeah. They didn't let their reasons become excuses, somebody says in the chat. We, we thank you for that. Now, we have been praying specifically over some very specific things over the last couple of days. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel led today to pray over those who are struggling uh, where to put certain things. Should they put them in the excuse column? Should they put them in the reasons column? Mm. Those who are struggling to categorize the experiences that punctuate their lives. Mm -hmm. Not recognizing that some of them could be fuel for the fire to achieve all that God is calling you to do. Even though in many cases they may actually be valid, valid uh, exclusionary reasons why you shouldn't be able to do something. So, so we want to we want that to be our focal point, and we want you to in the chat begin to put your prayer requests that pertain to where which column should I put this in? Should I put it in the reasons column? Should I put it in the excuses column? And we're going to ask Dr. Pollard to pray over those requests in just a moment. Uh, and as I'm as as we are are getting ready for him to pray over them, I'm going to put a couple in the chat. Uh, bring a couple on screen, I should say, just to highlight a few of them. But I want you to know this. Our prayer team is actively praying over every request that is coming in. And more importantly, the, the, the angels of heaven are seeing what you've placed in the chat as well. God is not ignorant to your cry. God is not ignorant to your situation. God is not blind to what you stand in need of, and he is ready to bless. And so we put, you put your prayer requests up on screen. Please pray for me that God help me in my weakness. Uh, Maria Moses says, strength for the journey. Mm-hmm. Kinda Johnson says, my prayer request is to do what God is encouraging me to do without excuses. Let go of fears, which holds me back. Uh, Peggy is praying for health issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help, uh, Vanessa, Venice is, is praying, help me, Lord, to know the difference between excuse and reasons. Sh- mm. Sheila is praying for uh, my granddaughter to remember the things she learned on her exam today. Her name is Kira. Mm. Jackie says, please pray that I will remain faithful to remain excuseless. It's a growing progress. Mm-hmm. Um, Markenzie, pr- praying for my healing over childhood wounds and victory despite them. Michelle Gary Beard says, please pray for us to choose to be more than conquerors with no excuses. April says, I pray I overcome negative self-talk, downplaying my gift slash calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These these are these are heavy. Porcina says, pray for miracles for my life, my children and 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 for young people. Rosie T says, pray for me. I have surgery next Wednesday afternoon. Wow, wow, wow. 
there's a, there's a prayer request. Pray for the move I have to make and to be excuseless. Yeah, somebody says, I choose excellence today. Lord, help me. I love that. Pray for my family that I, that, that, Faith that my family and I become excuseless. I, it took me some time to get that one out, but I want to make sure we catch a couple more, just a few more. Lord, help me, help us to follow you out of excuses. I love it. Some of you are being very transparent, and I, I think that is in response to the transparency you've heard thus far already in the broadcast, in our time together during this worship moment. There are so many prayer requests, and I will continue to put them up on screen, even as Dr. Pollard see, leads us to the throne of grace in prayer. Father, <clears throat> Father, this morning, your people have heard your word and have decided that we are going to be excuseless, whether it's our marriage or our health or our homes or our children or our jobs. We choose to make you first and foremost. And so we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that you've been so good to us and that you've blessed us. We thank you that like Joseph, when we could have had a life for which there had been a thousand excuses, we can see through all the mists and all the fog that you were calling us and that what the devil meant for evil, you have taken and turned to good. And we give you the glory for that. Now today, your people are presenting their needs and their requests before you. And as you said through your servant, Mrs. Ellen White, the Lord is rich in resources. And so today, we offer a positive testimony. You will break through. We will yes. overcome. We yes. will rise to the next level. We will be greater than he that is in the world. We will, we, we will, we will mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. We will hold to the love of God. We will hold to the peace of God. We will hold to the strength of God. We will hold to the joy of God. We will hold to all of the things that you have given us, the abundance of resources. We claim every single one of them and everything that Satan has stolen from us, we take it back today. We love you and we praise you and we thank you for the victories that are already radiating in our experience in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, doc, for that powerful prayer. Uh, I, I, I am, I am excited to hear the testimonies that are going to come out of these times that we've been able to spend together. I am excited to, to, to see what God is doing. And this is the thing. This is the thing. When God does it, don't be silent about it. <laughs> you were bold in presenting your requests. Be bold in sharing how the Lord delivered, how the Lord came through, how you were able to see fresh perspective on that thing that you thought was a reason and you began to move it into the excuse column. And now you've been able to overcome. Uh, we're so excited for that. Uh, we, we have on the screen for our students who are watching this morning, your worship code, uh, Japlin Pelleggi, uh, sh shares, that, shares that, hey, Kirk, don't leave it up there too long. <laughs> he said, don't leave it up there too long. Uh, but your code is ESFWU. And if you put that code into your system, you will get credit for uh, being with us this morning for this uh, another worship experience on this 21 day journey that God has entitled Excuseless. Uh, we're excited for that. We're excited for all of the requests, uh, all the different things that we're seeing in the chat. Thank you. I wanna say a word of thanks to every one of you for coming and being with us today. We, 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 this, this space that we are in, we don't take for granted that you could be doing something else, that you could find a different way to start your day, that you could uh, uh, read another book, you could find another broadcast, but we know that God led you to this particular space today, and we are thankful that you are here. And we wanna say a word of thanks to you, uh, Dr. Pollard, for coming this morning and sharing with us on the differences between a reason and excuse, and of course, also sharing your very personal testimony and, and I know that it has resonated with those who are, are, are watching 
and we will hear from them uh, even as the week continues on. It's preparation day, y'all. Uh, and I hope that you are going to have some, you know, I hope you have some some kind of routine. If you if you haven't already, uh, make sure you check out the Breath of Life broadcast tonight um, on the Breath of Life YouTube channel. Uh, the show is called Vision Lab, and our guest tonight is Pastor Freddie Russell, a uh, personal friend of both myself and Dr. Pollard, and uh, he is going to be sharing about uh, the, how to bring that vision from concept to reality. What happens when you don't see enough resources around you when you receive that vision from God? It's very much in line with what we, all we've been talking about in terms of being excuseless. Uh, that is the the Friday night. Uh, program. It's called The Weekend Exhale with B-O-L. It is tonight at 8 p.m. We want to make sure that every one of you get a chance to see that and come hang out with us tonight and uh, and be able to take advantage of the nuggets of wisdom that will be shared in that conversation. Uh, Doc, any, any final words as we get ready to close it out? No, I, I'm just reminded, of course, uh, I'm, I'm reminded, Kirk, of, of the story of Joseph. Um, if ever there was a candidate for Dr. Phil, or Maury Povich, it would have been Joseph. And oh, yes. um, oh, but, yes. but, but, but what he said was, he, he said to his brothers when they finally met after 23 years of practicing deception at his expense, he mm. said, don't be angry. Don't be angry at yourselves. What you meant for evil, God has turned for good. And that's the ultimate statement of faith. He didn't make any excuses. He said, no, he processed it. He said, don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't hate yourself. You sold me, but God sent me. He said, mm. so to anybody listening today, you may think these experiences come to you randomly and that you are the victim. You are not the victim. You are the victor. victor. That's what Joseph said. I was not a victim. I'm the victor. He said, God has been good to me. And he did this so that I could help you. The story of Joseph illustrates the difference between reasons and excuses. And excuses. Oh, wow. Wow. Whew. We got, we got, we got, we got another <laughs> message right there at the end. You know, that's a whole message right there at the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Doctor Pollard. I I love this. You know, it was it was uh you know a brainchild of our leader, Doctor Pollard, uh, Pastor Snell, to be able to. Uh, make sure that the whole campus community was incorporated Amen. in these 21 days. And you have been a welcomed addition to these okay. to this speaker lineup. And we just want to say a word of thanks for, for you and your team. I know Chaplain Pledgy will be joining us and we have somebody from Oakwood Academy. Uh, Pastor Taylor, Thank Rasheed you. Taylor will join us at some point during the our, our lineup of, of, of 21 day speakers. And we're excited to see the entire campus community come together and, and take part in this, what we are calling a revolution. I cannot thank Thank you enough for your message today. I'm definitely going to go back and check it out again. Family, make sure you are sharing. Make sure you are sharing. Make sure you are sharing. We're going to let you go early today. And we're excited about that. We're hoping that this becomes a trend that we can let you go early. But man, we, we, we know, we know that what has been deposited today, if you sit with it, if you uh, turn it over and over and, and analyze it and ask God for the sensitivity to be able to see through the lens of your own life what these principles and practices mean for you, I believe it's going to make a, a lasting impact. I believe it's going to make a change. And with that, family, we will see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. on Sabbath and Sunday, 6 a.m. during the week, 8 a.m. tomorrow uh, with uh, Linda Anderson, Dean Linda Anderson. She's going to be our speaker for tomorrow. We're excited for to have her come through and uh, and and we will see you then. And definitely want to make sure that you guys check out the Weekend Exhale with BOL. Uh, the, the show tonight is The Vision Lab, The Vision Lab with myself and Pastor Snell. And our guest is Freddie Russell. There's so many things that we want to share with you uh, as we get into the weekend, but we, we just want to leave it right there and thank you yet again for coming through. God bless you. Go with God. Mm -hmm.